Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today, you join me in what could be my riskiest ever purchase. Right, before we get into the video, I just want to ask you a massive favour, and that is to subscribe to the Shifting Metal YouTube channel. I know everyone asks you this and it's really annoying, but it really does help me out and I'm wanting to put my money where my mouth is. I am putting up a Tag Heuer Formula One watch that's worth £2,000 on Pride and Pinion right now and I'm going to give it away completely for free as soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers. So if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. You're in with a chance of winning the watch. If you haven't already, do it now. It's free to do and everybody wins. There's a few reasons why this might be the riskiest car that I ever bought. I'm hoping there won't be any issues whatsoever, but there's a few things here that, you know, will probably set alarm bells ringing for some people. So what we're actually in is a very nice pearlescent white 2016 Land Rover Evoque. Now I suppose that could be the fourth risk involved with this car. It is a Land Rover. Everyone knows the issues that Land Rover is facing with theft and that sort of thing. We're not so bad down here in the southwest. It does definitely happen. But as far as insurance goes, we're actually in the kind of lowest insurance rate area. So I've actually started stocking a few of these recently and I find they're pretty good news. They've usually got quite a decent margin in them. Yes, there's a couple of things that do go wrong with them. And you have to sort them out, but you know, you can talk yourself out of any car and we've done okay so far. So when I saw this one, it looked like quite a good potential bit of stock. It's only on 52 and a half thousand miles, but on the BCA report, I'll try and put it up here or Toby will, it did say incorrect mileage. And I'm sure that would have put a lot of people off. At least that's what I was banking on, that people would think, oh, well, I wonder what the actual mileage is. Maybe it's more. So I did my homework. As you all know, I'm guilty of not always thoroughly doing my homework. But on this one I did because the auction house itself was telling me that something wasn't quite right with the mileage. So I did all the necessary checks and kind of looked into the MOT history and it all actually looked really good. The main reason there seemed to be a discrepancy was the mileage was going up as you'd expect. And then just recently there was a DVLA inputted mileage of exactly 100,000. Either that was some kind of input error, um, you know, DVLA would normally be your MOT test or what I think has happened, someone has sold this car or they've transferred it into the trade and there's an option to put the mileage on there when you do that. And I think they've just put in 100,000 miles for some reason, no reason, I don't know why. Uh, but that seems to have been typed in because the service history, the MOT history, everything ties up. So I don't think this has kind of any mileage discrepancies whatsoever. I don't think it's been clocked or anything like that. And I was hoping that that would mean that it would make for quite a good deal for me. Hoping it would put a couple of people off that would, you know, soften the competition enough that I would get this quite cheaply. And I think I did get it at a reasonable price. Right, so regarding our potential incorrect mileage, I'm going to do a free vehicle score check, which is going to give us a score to start off with from 1 to 999. Tell us how good our car is. 828. Amazing. That's always good to see. Right, uh, looking good. Last time he had no comments. Recent MT pass rates high. Mileage is between 50,000 and 80,000. No, it's not concerned about mileage. Bad bits, none. Currently taxed. That's interesting. It's interesting because this one good thing this has got going for it is it is a very cheap to tax car. So let's check out our mileage tracker. So it goes through and I can't see any issues whatsoever. Obviously it said it was done 100,000 miles at some point, but it all looks good to me. Now, if you had any queries whatsoever and you were looking to buy a car and hand over your hard-earned money, I definitely recommend doing a vehicle score history report. You can do the average report for £2.97, the ultimate report for £8.97, and the ultimate report plus for £11.97, but use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20. You can get that for just £9.58. It will check whether it's been an import, export, salvage, uh, finance check, see if it's got any money outstanding on it, whether it's been written off, We'll give you a real breakdown of your price valuation, tell you whether it's been a taxi or a police car, whether it's been stolen, whether it's had a colour change, mileage clocking, and many, many other things. And on top of that, they're giving away money all the time. So you can weigh £600 every month, and if you buy one of these, you get three entries into that. What's there not to love? And while I did my research on the history here, what I actually ended up doing was making another mistake, which was not paying attention to all the other details. And I realized that this is a two litre Ingenium engine, which everyone says to avoid like the plague because they're 
made of chocolate, basically. I've never owned one, I've never experienced one. I don't know what they're like to drive. You do see them on higher mileages, but you do also see people complaining they got a lot of problems with them. So I've tried to stick to the 2.2 engines, which don't seem to have the same problems, but just, yeah, it just slipped the net for me. I was so busy looking at the mileage discrepancy potential issue that the fact that it was a two liter Ingenium just completely slipped the net. Now, there is one other thing that might make this a bit of a risky purchase, or maybe a difficult sell would be the right thing to say. And you might have noticed already from watching me drive it, and that it is a manual. It's a six-speed manual, and most people are gonna be expecting an automatic. I think most people, including myself, would want an automatic. I'm banking on the fact that there's still a lot of people out there who enjoy a manual. They don't trust automatics, they think they're dangerous for some reason because they got it in their heads that the old automatics that are really slow to change gear and were unresponsive are just bad news and that's what all automatics are like they don't haven't necessarily experienced a modern automatic to know how good they are i did know that when i was bidding on this and i was willing to think that a lot of people would want to buy them because i've sold the freelander twos tens and tens of them uh, with manuals and they actually drive really nice surprisingly normally when you've got a bigger 4x4 car they're not nice and a manual um, but those always seem to be okay and people seem to like them so i was hoping that that would be the case with this evoke and i have to say so far it is actually quite a nice manual to drive yes it's a bigger heavier car but it's got a very short throw gear stick it's obviously been tuned so it does that thing that modern cars do that when you release the clutch it revs the engine up for you a little bit so it actually feels quite kind of positive and progressive when i first got into it it sort of started pulling away quicker than i expected to and it carries its momentum quite well too this is an se model so it's quite well equipped it's certainly not the hse or do they even do an autobiography in this i don't know but it we got heated leather, we've got our nice infotainment screen, we've got a very nice steering wheel, we've got our cruise control, all that good stuff. No panoramic roof, sadly. I think that would have been nice on this car. Now, while I know the kind of trade market for these, especially the two litre Ingenium engines, has softened quite a lot, the retail demand seems to be quite strong still. A lot of people still want them, still an aspirational car. And if they're a bit more affordable now, then all the better. So I'm hoping that we can still do okay out of this. I'm hoping the fact that it's only on 52 and a half thousand miles, it's got good history. It's gonna help the fact that it's got a really nice sort of pearlescent white. It's not your bog basic transit van white. And the fact that it's a manual, I think to some people is gonna be a bonus as well. I know my sister, for example, won't even consider looking at an automatic car. I think even though it is an Ingenium engine car, I think I got quite a good deal on it. I paid £8,200 at BCA auction, uh, Blackbush online. I've got to pay fees on top of that. So let's say it's going to be 8600 And we've currently got this listed for £12,495. So we've got near enough £4,000 worth of margin in this. Yes, we've still got to do some preparation. We might need to service it. I think it needs a tyre because one's getting close to the limits. Um, we've got a couple of little trim bits to sort out on here. Our sunglasses holder is broken and one of the switches here for the cruise control seems to have snapped off. In fact, that's it there. So we need to get that reattached properly. Yeah, it's still going to leave a fairly healthy margin. Worst case scenario, something does go wrong with the engine. I think we could at least wipe our nose with it and, you know, not be massively out of pocket. I wouldn't choose to buy another two litre Ingenium, I don't think. But, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in the kind of hysteria and worry of certain cars. And if you listen to all the problems with every car, you'd never buy anything. Every car has got its quirks and problems. So if you're gonna listen to every single one, then you would never buy a car at all. But as I say, I haven't got a huge amount of experience with these, certainly not the Ingenium engines, so I imagine the comment section is going to be full of people who are telling me what a fool I am, what an idiot I am, that I need to scrap it probably, I need to get rid of it, get out of it before it causes me problems, and you may well be right. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't followed me on Instagram already, make sure you do. It's shifting underscore metal. I don't know if we'll do any further updates on this, but if it sells, 
which it will do, it will sell to someone at some point, um, I'll let you know if it comes back in for a warranty claim. Here's the video, me talking about it, saying that I feel somewhat confident it's going to be okay. But, you know, maybe in four months' time, once we've sold it and someone's had it for a little while, maybe I'll be crying on Instagram saying that I should never have touched it. Place your bets now. One other thing I've noticed with it as well is the power seat isn't really going backwards and forwards. I can tilt the back forward and I can lift the base up and down, but I can't go back and forth. So I'm starting to get like shin splints now from my leg being slightly cramped up where I'm trying to use the accelerator. So that's, that's another issue we've got to sort out actually. Oh, and there's a little trim thing missing off the door as well. So mm, that that's the problem with these sorts of cars. Even the little bits are quite expensive. But still, still, I still think, you know, there's enough money in it. We're going to do okay. As I say, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have I been a complete idiot? I'm sure at least 50% of you are going to chastise me for being a complete idiot. But hey-ho, uh, I think everything will work out for the best. If you want to check this car out, not saying you necessarily want to buy it, but, you know, any more details, pictures, whatever, you can find it on barrowmotors.co.uk, along with all of our other stock. If you want to sell us a car, head to my website, carsboughtformore.com. You can enter your information. We'll come back to you with a tailored quote, try and give you the best price going, and we can collect it from you. I think that's it for this quick video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.